We know so little. I know. <laughs> what I know. the hell? I it's know. wild. He is a science communicator, host, and producer. Please welcome George Zidan. George, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So uh, I'm really glad you're here. Uh, this is a topic that's been on my mind. America is reopening, and the idea that we can like, gather and spend time with friends outside this summer is the light at the end of a uh, very long tunnel. But that light uh, is a big nuclear fire in the sky that does cause cancer. <laughs> and so uh, the reason I wanted to talk to you is there was this piece in Outside Magazine uh, a couple of years ago that basically said sunscreen is margarine, <laughs> that uh, it's something that seems like science has created to to overcome nature and that when you actually dig into it, like, wait, hold on a second, nature is smarter and more complicated than we realized. Then there's a bunch of people pushing back and saying that's basically anti-vaxxer stuff <laughs> for sunscreen. And I don't want to be a sunscreen anti-vaxxer. So you uh, uh, have, have, have thought about this and done a lot of work on, uh, to try to understand the science here about what we know and don't know about sunscreen. So um, sunscreen, uh, what is it and what does it do? <laughs> okay, so sunscreen is usually one or a mix of many active ingredients. And the whole point of it is to try and protect you to some degree from the sun's ultraviolet light, which, as you said, we know causes skin cancer, right? Um, the thing is, you know, no sunscreen is going to be a perfect shield. And that raises this million-dollar question, which is, does sunscreen reduce your risk of skin cancer? And the best available evidence that we have today suggests that, yeah, probably does reduce your risk of certain types of skin cancer. But, and I'm going to say the word but like a thousand times today. Mm -hmm, great. <laughs> um, the best available evidence is one randomized controlled trial. It was conducted more than 20 years ago with SPF 16 sunscreen that's fairly different than what is on the market today in the U.S. And the study was conducted in Australia where the sun is trying to kill you all the time. Mm -hmm. So all that is to say, you know, the best evidence we have today, you know, it's a randomized controlled trial. That's good. Um, but it would be great to have multiple randomized controlled trials with modern sunscreens in places where the sun isn't trying to kill you every single day. So we get a fuller understanding of how good sunscreen is at protecting you from skin cancer. We know that the sun gives you can give you skin cancer, and there's multiple kinds of skin cancer. Yep. Uh, and, and it seems like, and tell me if this is wrong, that there's some evidence that sunburns are especially dangerous, right? That like sunburns represent a kind of damage that's more likely to lead to cancer. Is that right? So uh, there has been a lot of work on the link between sunburn and skin cancer. And some people would say exactly what you just said, that there, you know, that it represents the kind of damage that, you know, is visible and hurts and your body is punishing you for getting too much sun exposure. Um, and some people say that it's actually not the sunburn that, that directly causes skin cancer. It's just a, a marker of a massive solar overdose. And there's something else going on that's actually causing the skin cancer. Um, you know, like you said, like, it's very clear that too much sun causes skin cancer. It's less clear what too much sun actually means. You know, does right. it mean like a little bit over the ideal amount every single day for decades? Does it mean massive concentrated doses when you're at the beach without an umbrella? Does it mean massive concentrated doses when you're a kid? Like those details are still not fully understood. And, and, one of the arguments in this piece that was questioning sunscreen is, you know, human beings have been around for a long time and we have these signaling methods, right? And, and you know, if you, if you get a little bit of sun regularly, you get a tan. If you get the same amount of sun very quickly, you get a sunburn. And we know that some regular exposure to the sun does good things for us, right? It, it you know, you know, it, 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 vitamin D is what people talk about, though there's some dissensus about that. But we do know that there's some evidence that exposure to sun reduces depression, reduces other health conditions, right? Like may help with, you know, the functioning of your, of your heart. There's diabetes links and all of these things. So how do you factor that in that like some sun exposure seems to be good? Right. So the, the vitamin D thing is an especially fascinating puzzle because, you know, it is true. Our bodies, our bodies photosynthesize vitamin D just like plants photosynthesize sugar. And it's also true that low vitamin D levels are linked to a lot of bad stuff, heart disease, cancer, et cetera. So, you know, doctors thought, um, 
Okay, well, we're recommending that people wear all this sunscreen, but that seems to be resulting in lower vitamin D levels, so we should supplement people. We should put people on oral vitamin D. I don't know about you, but like in high school, I was put on a thousand units of vitamin D a week. Um, it turns out, though, that I've never gotten the amount of D that I wanted. <laughs> um, so no, sorry, I'm really sorry. This is a good no conversation, comment? and no, I, no, a good con- no, no, we're no. having a good conversation, <laughs> and I did that. I apologize. Continue. I'd, I'd, I'd like to give more D than I do. No, is that? No, like, please. No, just, please. Okay. Just I'm keep so going. sorry. So it turns out when you, when you give people D, uh, it does not actually take care of all the bad stuff that we thought it would. So some scientists are saying exactly what you're saying. Like maybe the sun exposure itself is what's good and it has nothing to do with vitamin D. And so really what we need to do is recommend that people spend the right amount of time in the sun. For every single one of those scientists, you will find like six dermatologists who will have a heart attack and say, you need to wear sunscreen every single day of your life. Um, You know, I think the debate's not settled yet, and I would not be surprised if the answer depended on where you live. Like, if you live in Australia, your risk of getting skin cancer sometime in your life is 600% as high as if you live in England. Now, you know, England is like, the sky is woven of mist and despair, so it's not like there's a lot of sun. But still, that is a massive difference. And so, you know, I think that particular debate is not settled yet. Yeah, one other piece of this, too, is around the color of your skin and that that a lot of these tests are done on white skin, like SPF testing, as you pointed out in your book, is done on on white skin. And there's some evidence that because... Uh, uh, skin with more melanin, darker toned skin, takes more sunlight to get the positive effects of sun. We're actually giving people really bad advice by telling them to basically prevent their body from doing some of these natural processes that even that that scientists recognize in some small amount is good. Yeah. Um, You know, I don't, I can't put a number on it, but the vast majority of research on skin cancer, sunscreen, all of that stuff is done not just on, on white people, but like on super white people, right? Like very, very white people. And, and there's no good excuse for that other than convenience. Like SPF testing is done by giving pasty white people sunburns. So, you know, it's just convenient to give someone a sunburn for whom it's easy to get a sunburn and it's easy to measure a sunburn, right? Um, but we need to, we need to do more to understand how sunscreen works on people with darker skin tones, well, what the skin cancer risk is on people with darker skin tones. I mean, we understand some of this. So, you know, people with darker skin do tend to get fewer sunburns and have a lower incidence of skin cancer. But the key word there is fewer and lower. It doesn't mean zero. And right. that's kind of resulted in this misconception that if you have darker skin, you, you're, you're fine to just do whatever you want and like not worry about it. Um, and that could make you miss an early diagnosis of skin cancer, which could be a real problem. There are also multiple kinds of skin cancer, and you know, melanoma runs in my family, and and uh, so I I worry about this. So there's melanoma, which is deadly and an incredibly dangerous form of cancer. Uh, there's then basal cell carcinoma, and there's squamous cell carcinoma. Um, mm-hmm. Do we know how the risk of sun exposure shakes out among those cancers? Or does sun, does the sun tend to increase your risk of some more than others? So um, we have some observational evidence, and then we've got a little piece of evidence from the randomized control trial. I'll start with the observational evidence. So the basal cell and the squamous cell, which are the non-melanoma skin cancers, they occur most frequently on your head, on your neck, and they're more common in people who work outdoors than people who work indoors. So what that maybe suggests, not definitive, is that maybe you know chronic levels of sun exposure just kind of above the right amount leads to squamous cell or basal cell carcinomas. Melanomas, on the other hand, are much more rare, um, but they are much more frequently found on your, uh, you know, what you'd call this part of your body, your yeah. trunk or your thorax or whatever, and your legs and your back. Um, and they are also much more common among office workers, like people who work inside than people who work outside. So the theory is, oh, well, those types of people tend to like go on vacation to the beach and roast themselves two or three days a year. Uh, and, and so that kind of sun exposure is more likely to result in, in melanoma. There's, again, like these are observational studies. They're not We know controls. so little. I know. <laughs> what I know. the hell? I it's know. wild. There, like, it, like, is there any other kind of, of 
of treatment that is recommended so unanimously. I feel like Joe Rogan now. That's what I feel like right now. I feel like I like I don't like I like I I I'm sure that like there's a derma if you're a dermatologist listening to this and you want to yell at me, I welcome it. I would like to learn more from your perspective. I but like every the, the there was that famous uh uh commencement that begins with wear sunscreen, this universal, unequivocal uh, uh, piece of advice. And yet you're like, oh, uh, there was a study in Australia and we checked the backs of, of desk workers once. And they, <laughs> like, it's, it's wild. How is this possible? How is this possible? We you don't know, know the dangers of going outside. Uh, you know, I don't know. And, 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 and some people would say we don't know the benefits of going outside either. Right. So I think the recommendation comes really because skin cancer is the most common cancer in the U.S. Melanoma is relatively rare, but the other two, uh, there's millions of cases every year. And so dermatologists think, okay, listen, we understand the chemistry of how sunscreen works really well. We know uh, what's going on on a molecular level. It's absorbing UV light. Uh, So listen, like better safe than sorry, might as well wear sunscreen. Um, But listen, I would love to see a large randomized controlled trial here in the U.S., with modern SPF 30 sunscreen um, to like resolve some of these outstanding issues that we've been sitting on for 20 years. One other point that you make uh, in your writings about this is one one potential issue is that sunscreen, by preventing sunburns, prevents you from getting the little alert from your body that's like, "Hey, you go inside. You've been out here too long." Uh, and so, like, there's there's just so many different uh, cross effects here that we don't totally understand. How did your behavior change after okay, so, you started learning about this? Yeah, so there's three things I do that I did not used to do or vice versa. The first is um, I do not use sunscreen to overdose on the sun. So I don't purposely uh, put on a bunch of sunscreen, reapply it multiple times, and then go and roast myself on the beach. Like that, I think there's no world in which that is not bad for you. Um, I think of sunscreen as something I'm going to wear – if I need to be in the sun anyway, not something that helps me get more sun. The second thing I do is I bought a pair of sunglasses. I mean, uh, UV light into your eyes is not great either. So other, you know, other types of protection, sunglasses, hats, clothes, uh, burkinis, you know, whatever, pick your poison. <laughs> um, and then the, the really surprising thing I learned about sunscreen is that everybody applies it wrong. So if you've made it through those two things and you get to the point where you really want to put sunscreen on, um, most people will rub it into their skin like moisturizer, right? Uh, at that point, it is below your, you know, a few layers of skin cells. So like, it, it's like you take your umbrella and you put it down on the ground and then step inside it and expect it to protect you from rain. Like that is not how you're supposed to use sunscreen. What you're supposed to do is gently rub it on your skin and then like step away and wait 15 minutes for it to dry and bind to your skin, to the top layer of your skin. Oh, that sucks. What about, that just sucks. What, no, my answer, no. And then what about, what about the spray? I don't even, I don't go for the goopy stuff. I love those sprays. All right. I'll, I'll, they've upsold me on the spray. Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure about the sprays. I have mixed feelings. On the one hand, if you're going to spray it on yourself, then the temptation to rub it in is less there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so that maybe that's a good thing. But then on the other hand, the, the amount of sunscreen that they use to calculate the SPF is two milligrams per square centimeter of skin, which just to translate that is a fuck ton, right? It's a lot. And it feels like you are smothered in butter if you put that amount of, of sunscreen on your skin. <laughs> so when I'm spraying myself with the spray, I'm like, there's no way this is enough, you know? So, so I don't know. I don't but know what to think work. about the sprays. Yeah, but it does work, right? Like that, that's the one thing. Like I know that if I put on a bunch of, of, of SPF 30 spray, it'll yeah. prevent a sunburn. It'll prevent a sunburn. Do you actually know? Like have you ever tried spraying half your body and leaving the other half unsprayed? Because that's really the only way to know for sure. Um, no, fair enough. I've never done a uh, uh, controlled experiment on my, on my corpus. Uh, th- this is, this is not, this is not where I, I know, but I will say that I have from time to time done what you correctly say we shouldn't do, which is this is the tool by which I do the roasting. So like, yeah. I know, here's what I know for sure. I know that if I don't put on sunscreen and I go out in the sun for hours, I will be fucked up. And yeah. I know that I've done that having applied sunscreen several times and I'm not. 
Yeah. Um, but what do you think about this? Let me throw something else at you. Sure. A long time ago, I received a piece of just conventional wisdom that basically the length of your shadow, that 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 when your shadow is longer than you are, that means the sun is at a greater than 45, uh, less than 45 degree angle, uh, and the rays are much less harmful. And so my general philosophy has tried to be, I really don't like using sunscreen. Um, and so what I try to do is like, if I'm going to go in the sun and get a little bit of sun exposure from like, you know, more than just walking to from my car or a lunch outside, but like be in the sun, I yeah. try to do it basically like, you know, before 1030, after 230 in that range. Where's, where's your head at on that? So that's a classic dermatologist recommendation. And I think it makes sense. I mean, the, the UV index, which is to say the like damaging ness of the sun's UV rays, uh, is at its peak in the middle of the day. So I have no objection whatsoever to, you know, you staying out of the sun in the middle. And that, you know, that's probably how our ancestors hunted, right? We hunted in the evening, very early in the morning, and we spent the middle of the day like lazing around in caves. Any final thoughts for people listening and who are actually a little bit like horrified <laughs> by, by what is their view that this is anti-sunscreen propaganda, that we actually like, what is the... You know, I, even in that that piece in Outside that was the, the most anti-sunscreen, it's like dermatologists say use it. They are worried about your skin, and they are worried about you getting skin cancer. These are the doctors, and they say, slather it on, protect yourself. I mean, listen, I think it's tough. Like, I don't think there is a simple answer yet. I mean, I think if you've got if you've got a family history of skin cancer, if you are very, very light-skinned, you want to, like, I have no problem with using sunscreen as one tool in your protect yourself from the sun arsenal. Um, where I really have an issue with it is, is, is what we were talking about before, like, don't abuse it to get a, a bigger dose of sun exposure. To me, that seems like the biggest danger to avoid. And other than that, like, if you, because look, you're going to forget to, you're never going to be perfect. You're not going to apply it every single day. You're going to forget um, it seems to me that like in winter, you don't really need to apply it because the sun, you know, the sun's UV rays aren't as strong. So like you're, you're going to have imperfect sunscreen application. Maybe you'll end up with like 40% of days where you apply sunscreen. And, and so, you know, that's hedging your bets basically until we get that big randomized controlled trial. I think it's shocking. I think it's actually shocking how little we know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's like on the one hand, science progresses slowly. It's, you know, it takes a while. This this 20-year-old trial, like, the reason it took 20 years is because you have to wait a long time for melanomas to pop up in people, right? Yeah. Um, but then on the other hand, like, why didn't we start another trial 10 years ago? Well, maybe five years ago. Like, when we got the results of this one and it was less than, like, ironclad, why don't we start up another trial? That right. that, that to me is, like, you know, millions of cases a year. You've got, you know, this stuff is sold in every single drugstore and grocery store on the planet, basically. Why don't we have more than just one large randomized controlled trial? I, I don't get it. Like, there were more people enrolled in the Pfizer in the Pfizer COVID trial than there were in this sunscreen trial. And like, I'm all for I'm all for COVID trials. Like, we need that. That's great. It's amazing that we got 44,000 people, you know, enrolled in that trial, and the, the results are incredible. But like, if we can do it for the COVID vaccine, we can do it for sunscreen. Right. Given that the the sun kills a lot of people every year too. There's a there's an epidemic of melanoma and deadly skin cancers every single year. Yep. George Zidan, thank you so much. This was such a great conversation.